everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Collection Comic of the Week. I'm going to go ahead and just address the elephant in the room. You're probably wondering why I look like a complete fool right now. Well, once upon a time, things like Jean Short by Tommy Hilfinger and uh, a backwards visor being worn upside down, well, once upon a time, some people considered this cool and hip, and this was in style and people wore this prominent people people in all walks of life and they got away with it you know in hollywood music videos everything it was considered acceptable but we look upon it now and we go good god i know things fall out of fashion but how did we ever let that get in fashion well keeping with my theme of introductions here for my first month of this new series. Things that were considered cool at the time, but now when you look at it in retrospect are completely, completely awful, is kind of something that fits with this book that we're going to talk about for my comic collection today. And unfortunately, it was also the first comic book I ever owned that represents one of my all-time favorite superheroes that would go on to become one of the biggest and most popular superheroes in all of cinema and an introduction to one of my favorite mutant characters. That's right. This week's book on the collection comic of the week is Captain America number six from 1997 written by Jeff Loeb, a writer who I actually do really like. He wrote Batman The Long Halloween, which is my all-time favorite Batman story. He wrote Batman Hush, which is close to the top, and uh, he wrote one of my all-time favorite Superman stories with <laughs> Superman for All Seasons, but Jeff Loeb's not really the problem here. The problem is the art has been drawn by the one and only Rob Liefeld. And yes, there's big arms. There's giant guns that are bigger than the person. And of course, there's Captain America with a ridiculously not endearingly huge chest. Oh, so I got this book in the toy section of Walmart because... I, you know, I, I'd heard of Captain America, and I, 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 I may have misspoke when I said it was my, this was my first Captain America comic book, but it, I, this was not my first total exposure to Captain America. They had, you know, kind of the, the B movie that I had seen, um, kind of, even then, you know, I didn't really think it was a B movie then, I was like six, seven, probably close, probably seven years old at the time, and. And I was like, eh, it's a B-movie looking at it now, but I probably got into it. And he was also on the Fox Kids Spider-Man show, so I was aware of Cap, but I'd never read a comic book or owned a comic with Cap. Cable, on the other hand, I never even knew who Cable was, and this was my first exposure to Cable, my first Captain America comic book. Yes, this, this, this is what made me a fan of of Captain America. So just because I'm dying not to be seen like this anymore, well, let's take a look inside. So once again, let's take a moment to appreciate Rob Liefeld's Captain America in all its glory right here. Let's just, just see here. There's his head and the chest pops out all, yeah, all the way, goes straight down. There's a little bit of an abdomen that's like, and then the gun just, Way too fucking big, but this is what was acceptable. I actually, um, I met a, a very prominent artist, uh, in today's comic book world, uh, at a bar, you know, before a convention one time, and, you know, he brought up Rob Liefeld, and I remember just kind of thinking, like, I kind of chuckled, and, you know, he said, well, we all laugh, but he said, I want to point out, Rob is a, is a good guy, and... Secondly, this this is what sold, and this is what people wanted to see back in the 90s. They wanted huge balloon muscles. They wanted guns bigger than the person. This is what people were into, and, you know, much like the, uh, you know, 
an upside down and backwards visor, you wonder why anyone thought that was cool, but it was cool. So one thing I did notice is apparently I did not get the first part to this book because if you remember in past uh, Collection Comic of the Weeks, I always mentioned that some of these books I would buy off the newsstands at uh, Walmart or Kroger or what have you. I'd always have to spoil the ending slightly, just that much, because I had to make sure there was a conclusion. Because who knew if the second part would come into your store? And, you know, we got some action here. Got Modoc, and I didn't even know what the hell Modoc was. I'm just like, what in the heck? Because I didn't swear then. Is that? And got a big splash page again. Uh, you know, got to have a small fee. He can't draw feet, so we got to have him from an angle like this because he can't draw feet. I did think this was kind of cool. You know, just kind of like, just like coolly through the shield. Like, in retrospect now, like, this is probably the worst artwork of throwing the shield i've ever seen it is literally a stagnant image and everybody else again just kind of going out there i just thought it was cool like how he used the shield like that like that i learned from the movie the b movie yep. more uh, inability to draw feet even in like his greatest creations movie they made fun of his inability to draw feet and got uh got a paid advertisement uh <laughs> for a comic book sale apparently and some more action here, and uh, you know, uh, uh, Spider-Man, uh, Mike and Ike, uh, Hot Tamales uh, contest, where you can win a Spider-Man hoodie. I do want that Spider-Man hoodie. We got some, oh, hey, 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 that's that one. The, the foot is bigger than her head. I mean, it's not quite as bad as the normal, but like, his, did, what? She wearing lugs? I don't know. I don't even know who that is anymore. Like, I just kind of, it literally says, and then there's this girl. You know, they're calling her Bucky, but that's not Bucky. Just more... Look at that fucking arm, dude. Like... Like, seriously. Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner eat your heart out. Look at this shit. Look at this shit right here. Get Taser number one. You know, the, the action's not too terribly bad, but it's just kind of... Again, if, if I were to see this today with all the evolution that's happened with comic books, with all of what we have seen with Cap, I'd be going, what is this? And he's coming for him. The story's not too bad. Like, I, I didn't really... You know, there's kind of like this weird story going on with like a pocket universe and Marvel at the time. So, <sighs> yeah, just not, uh, other than just seeing some, as a seven year old, just seeing some cool action with, um, a conclusion or a somewhat conclusion to a story was good enough for me. Uh, got a, uh, Jet Moto advertisement here that you've been staring at, and it's kind of cool. They have the, the trophy with a sling and a, a cast because of what you got to do in Jet Moto. Um, bullpen bulletins and, uh, advertising, uh, the beast into his own series. Maybe we'll be, uh, visiting that on a future edition. Uh, really hyping up Marvel Online, which was innovative for its time. And I, when I finally got the internet, uh, I spent a lot of time there. And, you know, kind of like, look. If this is what they went off on when when casting Chris Evans, I, I don't think they did a very good job. <laughs> look at look at what is this, look at Steve. What the hell is that for Steve Rogers? Oh my God! I oh I reread this thing too and just I could just what why why. <sighs> Gable stuff I didn't understand then. You know, Bucky versus Crossbones. Uh, I guess the, that that girl in this pocket versus Bucky, and here's the the Avengers assemble. You know, this is kind of. I mean, here's here's a life filled splash page with all the Avengers. So if you do like his work, this is this this is a cool, this is cool. 
And Heroes for Hire. Got some Thunderbolts. Uh, Keenan Kell. All right. Keenan and Kell and Honeycomb and Golden Crisp. Ooh, this is the kid. This is after the Kids' Choice Awards. How about that? Uh, more of a blast from the past for you. Subscribe to Marvel. Uh, Star Wars. Uh, Parker Brothers. Uh, card game. Yeah, it's like a card game and uh, an advertisement for uh, Cool Borders on uh, the PS1. And that is, uh, it, it, this is the book that turned me into a Captain America fan. It is no secret that that style of art just did not age well. It's not really what we're all about here. My hair's messed up from wearing that silly thing like that. But it's not what comic books are about now. It's not what's considered good comic art. It was what sold. It was of the times. And it was something that was considered super cool. But when you look back on it, you make fun of it. But you gotta remember, much like that gentleman told me at the bar that night, this is what people wanted to see. And obviously it must have worked to some extent because while granted I look back on this and roast it and laugh now, but Captain America is one of my all-time favorites, and it began in this book. So, for all the grief I've given Rob Liefeld about his artwork in this book, he's endeared, he's had a great career in comics, and he kind of embraces some of the uh, his quirks nowadays. And like I said earlier, he even had it, even had one of his own characters roast it in uh, one of his own, in, in the movie based on it. So yeah. Uh, now, I have no ill will towards Rob Liefeld. I'm just not the biggest fan of this artwork. But that was what made me a Captain America fan. And do you also own this comic or any other of the Rob Liefeld Captain America run? Well, let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share, subscribe for more content, not just from the world of comic books, from the world of pro wrestling, gaming, anime, and all things geek culture. Follow me on my social media pages, facebook.com slash athleticgeek89, Twitter at athletic underscore geek89, and Instagram at athleticgeek89. That's a mouthful. I'm out. Later.